President Ramatar on June 4th met more than 25 Christian leaders at a presidential complex to brief them on several issues with primary focus on the anti-money laundering bill. Also at the meeting were Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh, Legal Affairs Minister Anil Nandlal and the Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Juan Ejil, and Presidential Advisor, Gail Tashira. The President and his team explained the negative implications that would result from Ghana's blacklisting, the effects on all Guyanese, and the need for everyone to support its passage in the National Assembly. The pastors jointly expressed their concerns at the possibility of Ghana being blacklisted, and the President gave his commitment to ensure that he can do all that is possible towards ensuring the bill's passage, to limit the harm already done by the latest move by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force. I will assent to such a bill as soon as it is sent to me by the National Assembly. The meeting was a follow-up to a previously held one with the same religious leaders at State House a few weeks ago. The meeting is one of several planned by the President to inform various stakeholders about key developments across the nation. The exercise was well received by those in attendance with many questions being asked and answered by the high-level government officials. The decision by the West Indian Cricket Board to withdraw the long-awaited international test match between Guyana and New Zealand from these shores is being described as extremely disappointing by the head of state. It is tragic in many other ways too. First of all, we have the West Indies Cricket Board. It seems to be against accountability. The bill that we passed in Parliament was to give, and this bill was passed almost unanimously, almost unanimously. No one voted against it, but there were a few abstention on the AFC benches. But clearly everyone recognized the importance of accountability in the cricket in Guyana. And we have invested a lot in, stadium, in the stadium, in the infrastructure, in our country. This group in the West Indies Cricket Board has no investment anywhere, but they can move, they, they move, they move the cricket here to, to fight, to defend, to defend other interests. They obviously don't have the interest of, the, of cricket or the cricketing public in our country is not uppermost in their minds. The president added that the West Indian Cricket Board of Control has given a blow to the game which has always been seen as a unifying force for the region. I hope that good sense will prevail, that they will uh, recognize that what, has, what we have done is in the interest of cricket. The bill that was passed by the parliament is in the interest of cricket and in the best interest of cricket and I hope better sense will prevail. The WICB has moved the match scheduled for Guyana on June 26 to June 29 to Barbados. This matter will be raised again as we did in the past with CARICOM um, to raise this issue because I think it's a very serious issue and it is, it is an issue that has gone even beyond uh, just cricket. As I mentioned just now, even touching on the whole integration process of our society. Skellon Estate surpassed its target of 13,795 tons for the first crop this year by approximately 40 tons. The actual to date production of 13,753 tons for the first crop compares more than favorably to the actual production of 4,994 and 6,633 tons in 2013 and 2012 for the first crops, respectively. Well, I'm very happy to tell you that um, Skellon Estate, for the first time, since the new factory has, um, you know, it, was, it had some problems in the past, but for the first time, the factory has reached its target. I want to take the opportunity to congratulate the workers of Skellon, the workers and management of Skellon, for the job that they have done. They have surpassed their targets, I understand, by some 40 tons or so, more than, um, than the target had. So that's a very, very good sign, and I hope that they will be able to build on that 
so from the, uh, the next crop things will be better and most of the issues that has plagued the factory in the past that we can resolve them and Skeldon can definitely fulfill the promise that we had when, when we start when we decided to build the new factory there. Between the conclusion of the first crop and the commencement of the second crop, the Skeldon estate is scheduled to do extensive engineering work in the factory. There will be the replacement of hydraulic components on both pond dumpers, such as control valves and lifting tilting cylinders, so as to improve the reliability of the operations. This will be enough to sustain an hourly rate of 220 tons of cane. Modification of the outboard pump dumper was awarded to an external contractor and this project is anticipated to be completed by January 2015. Additional works include replacement of process pumps, isolation valves, the evaporators and continuous vacuum pans and air heated tubes on the number two boilers. By cutting the administrative arm of the Office of the President's funding, the allocation for the provision of the Head of State Security has been removed. This action can compromise the security of President Donald Ramutar. This move sets a dangerous precedent and is unacceptable for any Head of State, government or right-thinking people of a democratic nation. The disapproval of funds by the political opposition for the Ministry of Finance's administrative arm means that students wishing to attend the University of Guyana will not be able to access any loans for 2014. The move will prevent many students who are unable to pay cash from studying and having a tertiary education. Most of these students are underprivileged and are unable to afford higher education to further their development and increase job opportunities. Government's efforts to continue the improvement of medical services have been negatively affected by the decision of the parliamentary opposition to cut funding for the specialty hospital and the medical sector. This move means that monies for the provision of medical gear for doctors and nurses, along with new equipment for hospitals and clinics such as those at Port Kaituma, Linden, Kokwani and Bartika, and new ambulances have not been approved. This move by the political opposition will adversely affect the provision and delivery of health care in communities across Guyana. The government information agency GINA evolved from the government information service and was formally launched in 2002. GINA is executing its mandate of keeping Guyanese, both locally and in the diaspora, informed of government's programs and policies pertinent to development. Cognizant of the right of Guyanese to information, GINA, through its dedicated staff, has endeavored to deliver its mandate to the best of its ability. Guyanese have every right to be informed on policies, programs and projects which impact on their lives. The Government Information Service was in operation long before the PPPC administration took office and discharged the same mandate. GINA is a unit of the Office of the President and its mandate is similar to other organizations around the world where governments have a fixed body to disseminate their information. GINA will endeavor to remain steadfast to its mandate and takes pride in continuing to serve the people of Guyana. GINA, information for nation building. Government remains opposed to any form of torture, so says the President and Commanding Chief Donald Ramitsar, as several cases of misconduct by members of the disciplined services come to the fore. I have read, I've seen the news about um, this incident in, in Sparinam Police Station. Um, while I think it's still being investigated, but let me also make the position of the government very clear on these issues. We are opposed to this, to any torture of, of people um, who are in custody, for that there should not be any torture of um, anyone who's in custody. That that has always been our position. The president added that his administration has always respected human rights and will always uphold these principles. Any kind of torture is um, abhorrent to us. I mean, we do not. Um, we do not condone those type of things, but I would not want to say specifically on this issue because as far as I understand, it's still under some investigation. The 
Gaxpo 2014 was formally launched on June 6th under the theme Transformation Partnering for Better Guyana. The event is intended to showcase locally produced goods and services and delivering the feature address, the president cited the need for cheap, reliable and sustainable energy to have a strong industrial and manufacturing sector. He also spoke of the need for other major infrastructural projects to further Ghana's development. We need a new airport. We need deep water harbor, particularly in this part of the world, when we see that the Panama Canal is now being expanded and therefore we can expect greater volumes of trade international trade will be taking place and there might be as i've been reading somewhere that it is quite possible that there might be another canal in our area in nicaragua so obviously the volumes of trade here in this area will will possibilities will be greater and volumes will be greater and we have got now to try to work towards having a deep water harbor and improving the harbors that we have right now in the Demerara area to make them more efficient. He also spoke of the building of public-private partnerships to realize several key projects. We had a successful one with the Boris Bridge. The, and I'm confident Maria will prove to be a huge success, another good example of government moving in that direction to create partnership both with foreign and local capital to improve and increase our capacity to develop. And I would like to see the private sector itself doing much, much more of that. The president also repeated his call for stakeholders to voice their support for the critically needed anti-money laundering bill and an end to partisan politicking on this issue. We must recognize that some things are above partisan interests. And this is one of the issues that is, for me, definitely above partisan interests. And hopefully we can move as fast as possible to come out of this situation so that the, the upward trajectory that our country has been going on over the last eight years can con not only continue, but could be accelerated for us to have a stronger country, a more developed people, and a more beautiful country as well. The importance of road linkages in Guyana's hinterland to propel economic growth and improve access to services is fully recognized. To this end, Budget 2014 has allocated $1 billion to rehabilitate critical interior roads, including the Linden to Lethem Road. Government's investment in rural development will be further strengthened this year with the sum of $1 billion which has been provided in the 2014 national budget. The sum will go towards infrastructure such as roads, bridges, drainage and irrigation, and community market facilities, along with entrepreneurial activity in rural communities. Parents with school-aged children will achieve a measure of relief with a provision of $10,000 per school year for all school children in the public schools. This from the 2014 budget is in addition to the school uniform voucher, which will continue to be distributed. The 2014 national budget has allocated $32.3 billion for education as government continues to emphasize the sector which has undergone significant transformation in response to the emerging needs of society. A message from the Government Information Agency. The Government Information Agency, GINA, evolved from the Government Information Service and was formally launched in 2002. GINA is executing its mandate of keeping Guyanese, both locally and in the diaspora, informed of government's programs and policies pertinent to development. Cognizant of the right of Guyanese to information, GINA, through its dedicated staff, has endeavored to deliver its mandate to the best of its ability. Guyanese have every right to be informed of policies, programs, and projects which impact on their lives. The Government Information Service was in operation long before the PPPC administration took office and discharged the same mandate. 
Jina is a unit of the Office of the President and its mandate is similar to other organizations around the world where governments have a fixed body to disseminate their information. Jina will endeavor to remain steadfast to its mandate and takes pride in continuing to serve the people of Guyana. Jina, information for nation building. The expansion of the local aviation sector is continuing with the launch on May 6 of Dynamic Airways. The new player in the aviation sector was realized after a series of negotiations with government officials and local aviation officials, including a meeting with the president on June 2nd. It's a very important development for us because we have seen tourism as one of the new growth poles in our economy. And this will certainly help in that regard in arrivals and increasing and making it easier to get to Guyana. It also, the traveling public, the business public who travel um, to and from North America in particular, I think that they can expect more competition. And you know with more competition, we get better prices as well. And that is another important spin-off of this operation that we have here um, beginning very, very soon. The United States registered airline is gearing to commence New York bound flights from Guyana by Montan. The airline, which offers chartered and scheduled flights across the U.S. and other international destinations, is the latest to come on board the Guyana route to capitalize on the busy peak summer season. The airline will also offer increased cargo capacity for the transportation of agricultural produce to overseas markets at very competitive rates. I think that this new venture that gets on stream will make a major contribution, not only to make it easier, but that will receive ease that we facilitate the, the process here. I hope it will be, we will have the same ease in our people moving in the different destinations, destinations that we will go and it will increase arrivals, improve tourism, develop agriculture, and make a bigger contribution to the development of our society. Dutch airline Incel Air and Panels Flak Carrier Copa Airlines are also scheduled to commence operations from Guyana to various destinations in the United States. The Guyana Civil Aviation Authority, the GCAA, has noted expressions of interest by several other international airlines, with at least 10 companies requesting information from the local aviation authorities as they explore possibilities in beginning operations here.